This film is so remarkable, but what I think is almost equally remarkable is how it came to be, uh, which we just heard some Bob Dylan, were it not for Bob Dylan, this might not have happened in the way that it did. Uh, Shai, as I understand it, you were in Amoeba Records, uh, you were looking in the Bob Dylan section, a documentary uh, that Alma had done was there, you picked it up. You watched it twice that night. You want to pick up the story from there? You betcha, yes. Yeah. So I was at Amoeba Records. I was uh, doing some Bob Dylan research. There was a DVD there. It's called Bombay Beach. It's an incredible movie. Uh, it said the soundtrack by Beirut and Bob Dylan. I figured, wow, this has got to be some kind of documentary. This guy doesn't give his movies out, uh, his uh, music out often um, for all the money in the world. So I think, oh, it's got to be a tasty DVD here. And I picked this DVD up, I go home, and sure enough, it's an incredible movie. Watched it twice that night. Instant fan. Jump on the internet. AlmaHarrell.com. What's up, wizard? Where are you? <laughs> um, and she's around, and she's making a, a music video for, for this uh, really cool band. And she's like, hey, you know, we should meet up. And we meet up at this place called The Firefly. Uh, I'm sure you've been there. And... Um, we hang out and we have similar sensibilities and we're we're like-minded kindred spirits and she's like hey come work on this thing with me in a couple weeks so we work and and that was the beginning of our uh creative life together alma what struck you about shia in the initial days and weeks of that relationship that friendship oh wow um i think just his uh i guess his heart mm -hmm. and how much he wanted to pour himself into art and um, make something about people and start to you know make films about people as opposed to I guess uh, robots and cars yeah. Um, yeah just how passionate he is I guess and how eloquent he is and funny yeah. all these things that uh, you don't always know about a person from how they write about them and so the beginnings the premises of the film that we saw here today came from real life writings that you did can you talk a little bit, Shia, about what you were writing and where you pictured that going as you were writing it? Because I can't imagine the time you would have known it would have become this. Yeah, I was in a mental institution, and uh, I, they told me I had PTSD. They said, the only way out is through. We got a solution for you. Um, that solution is called exposure therapy. Uh, so we're going to go through all these uh, dark chapters of your life, and we're going to expose them and write them down and play them out. And so I was doing this for a couple of weeks, and I had something that that felt like scene work, actually. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I was in a really low spot. My God is art. Art, love, and God mean the same thing to me. I needed to pray to something. I started feeling really low. I had just lost my platform to express myself. None of y'all were really messing with me. I was quite nuclear at the time. And uh, so I started leaning into this thing and sending it to my friend, who was one of the only people talking to me at the time. She was working on a TV show at that point. And she said, hey, you know, this could be something special. You should stay, stay kicking this can down the hill. So I got really hopeful and, and knew that she had turned down a job and know she's very tasty. I've been sending her auxiliary art stuff for years and she hadn't been, she didn't bite. This time she was like, hey, you know, this could be something. And I thought part of me was thinking, oh, she's just trying to keep me afloat. And uh, then another part of me was like, maybe she's right. So I kept leaning into it, kept leaning into it, leaning into my therapy, leaning into this, leaning into Sam Shepard plays. And out of the amalgamation of that came this 70 page conversation in a room with two characters. Went to Grammarly, made it look cute, <laughs> sent it back to Alma. And uh, she said, uh, Great, now we need to get him out of the room, and when you get out of the room, we'll work on the rest of it. So I got out of this rehab facility, um, got up with Alma, started talking about how to get them out of the room, kept writing. She's like, you need to go see your dad. The ending lies there. She was, you know, that's a double entendre. Uh, so I hadn't seen my dad in seven years, went to go see him, recorded the whole thing, FaceTiming her, recording the conversations, from this, get, you get a lot of this dialogue like, hey, I'm making a movie about your dad. Make me look good, honey boy. This is all stuff he said that I said, recorded it all, came back, and we started crafting a structure. And that was the process. Shia, I understand that you actually 
spied. It was kind of him and his real life dad that stood out to you that made you think this might be the kid to do this. Can you just talk about? Well, don't get it twisted. Alma's the director. It was never like, uh, hey, here's what I think. It wasn't yeah. like that. It was like, you know, Alma had found this kid. Yeah. She's like, this is somebody you need to meet. She had really, she had seen 500 kids. Yeah. By the time I got to Noah. So she was the filtration system. She was grinding for a good two months before I came in. So I knew that this dude was special because, again, she, he got the cosign. So I'm, I'm walking in. I'm a little nervous also, you know. I know basically we got to make it work. Yeah. It wasn't like here's four options. It was like we have two options. One is a very trained actor who's very technically sound, and one is a kid who's never acted before who's got a very full well of pain. Noah was the trained actor. So I'm quite nervous walking in. I'm not very technically sound. I'm the other kid. Um, and, uh, and I walk in. I hear he's British. So already I'm like, nah, it's not going to work. I meet dad. Dad is completely uh, healthy, social, wonderful, diplomatic. I'm like, no fucking way. This is, this is not going to work. Um, he points at the door. He, I said, where's, where's your boy at? points at the door. I see this kid pacing outside in the parking lot. It's the first time I think, oh, shit, okay. Okay, he's on fire. He's bubbling. You know, he's out there just pacing. And uh, I asked the dad, how long has he been out there? He's oh, about 20 minutes. Oh, okay, there's nobody else in the room. I go outside. Hey, Noah. He doesn't respond. Strike two. I'm thinking, oh, okay, this, this is something here. He's locked in. I go over there and uh, put my hand out. He says, hey, let's run the scenes. So sure enough, we start running the scenes. He knows how to play jazz. I go left, he goes left. You know, we get off the pages. He has the pages. These are like 12, 13 page scenes. He's just, yeah. um, which we needed because we only had 19 days to film. Yeah. So uh, you needed a technical actor who could also like turn switches, mm -hmm. knew how to fly his airplane. Um, and so uh, he, he was that. I put my hat on his head, crowned him king, said, uh, uh, Hey, let's go in here and do this for Alma. We went in. Alma was already filming. You know, we were already making a movie. She's in the parking lot with her phone. Um, <laughs> we went into the audition room and, like, you know, basically did it for money. You know, we had to do it for the money. We had to, like, prove it to them that we found our movie. So Lucas is in the room. Me and Alma are in the room. Casting person's in the room. And it's like, well, we've already clicked up. We've already agreed on it. And now we got to, like, work as a team for the money, right? So we make a little tape for the money. Tape goes real well. And we have our, like, A team, you know, starting five. Um, and then we started divvying out pages to all the actors. You know, Byron wrote his own stuff. Yeah. Noah wrote his own stuff. Lucas wrote his own stuff. Just started giving agency over and, like, removing myself from the writer and uh, diving into the actor. And really, you know, then Alma took charge and we made a movie. One of the things that really stood out to me is that in all the films that have ever been made about addiction, addiction and recovery often gets played a certain way and the addict is always the bad guy and there's nothing but bad and there's never love and there's never humor. Yeah. Byron, can you talk a little bit about bringing humor into this world of addiction and recovery? Well, I was serious. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, man, this is a dramatic film, so I'm going to have to be serious. And then when I saw it at Sundance and everybody was laughing, I was like, damn. <laughs> Gift, gift and a curse, you know? <laughs> so I'm just going to go with it. Yeah, like... <laughs> um, but I'm glad I was able to do what I was put here to do. Part of me feel that way, which is bring balance to any project that I'm a part of. So the fact that it was heavy, I was able to be the light uh, in this film, you know what I mean? Naturally. Um, and they gave me the space to do that. Um, I locked in and became that character, and then that character, to me, um, befriended uh, Lucas's character, Otis. And I knew what he kind of wanted, because in my, my character's mind, I've been there before, you know? And I saw a part of myself in Otis. So that made us become friends. Yeah. And we was able to hang, and basically I was able to, you know, once we confide in one another, basically let them know that everything's gonna be okay and like this is a privilege for us to even be here mm -hmm. and go run with it, you know? Shia, has this been cathartic for you? I, and not just the writing of it, the making of it, the watching of it, the people reacting to you as they watch it. How has it been for you? Uh, it's been overwhelming. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like in a, 
it, it hasn't landed yet. I'm still kind of levitating. I've just been celebrating with my dad every day and full FaceTime, just giggle at each other, like just stupid faces. And my mother's super proud and I get to see my friends be on. And yeah, I'm just, I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful to the three of you for making this film and for taking the time and for everyone for showing up today. Thank, Thank you so much. You.